A Voice in the Wilderness Gospel according to Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 to 12 John the Baptist follows an uncivilized lifestyle with his life dress code eating habits according to postmodern standards yet he makes us uncomfortable uh, with his message it is not about his diet clothing hairstyle or living in the wilderness Civilized sinners wanted to know who you are, John, who you are. He was entitled to the Jewish priesthood. At his temple was the wilderness. His altar was the Jordan River, and his vestments were animal skin. He is the culmination of the Old Testament prophets, and for Jesus, he is the greatest man ever born to a woman. And he is... Uh, he was a son of Zechariah, a Jewish priest of the order of Abijah. His wife is Elizabeth. According to the New Testament, uh, she is related to the mother of Jesus. If you are not the Messiah, prophet Elijah, who are you? He is a forerunner. He is the Advent man. He is the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. John is calling you and me to repentance. Prepare for the coming of Christ in glory. The journey it takes from civilization into wilderness of repentance and into the river of life. On the baptismal phone, John points out and saying, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who gives us life and life in abundance, an apocalyptic Jewish ascetic prophet of the first century, known as the forerunner of the Christ, conveyed the message of repentance, the kingdom of God, faithfulness or fidelity, and uh, conversion. Jesus' ministry began in the context of John ending his ministry, not as a prophet, uh, not as a priest, but as a prophet. He was baptized by John the Baptist. These words from the Matthew involves proclamation, desert, repentance, preparation, and for the kingdom of heaven. He was uh, imprisoned by Herod Antipas for denouncing Herod's marriage, which was illegal under Jewish law. According to the scripture, Herod's stepdaughter Salome requested John's head to be placed uh, to please her mother Herodias. Herod's Antipas obligated to fulfill the request. If we explore the Judean wilderness, we immediately think of leaders like Abraham, Moses, Elijah, John the Baptist, and of course Jesus of the Nazareth. Jesus even spent a significant amount of time in the wilderness, hard places and lonely places. Such a place is where you trust in Jesus. God gave his people the promised land, but he kept for uh, himself the wilderness. It is in places like this he developed leaders. If you are going through a wilderness-like experience, hard places, life in the rough terrain, maybe God is forming a leader in you. It might be true, keep walking no matter whether it is in the season of promised land or season of wilderness, God have a plan for you and your life. Judean wilderness run from the north of Jericho to the uh, southern end of the Dead Sea. It is around 60 miles long and about 30 miles wide. It receives very little rain per year and has very little vegetation. This makes the soil uh, composition very bad. It used to be like a watered garden for the Lord, and in the future, God will flourish his land during the reign of Christ. As a student of the Bible, uh, Jordan, uh, Judean wilderness also has other historic significance. The Essenes, a community like the Pharisees and Sadducees, lived in the Judean wilderness from about 200 BC to around 68 AD. This spiritually devoted group left Judaism or Jerusalem uh, during their, due to their belief that the priesthood is corrupted. When the Roman captured fully, uh, they uh, hide uh, 
uh, hide all the literature, destroy the Israelites uh, between 68 or 70 AD. They hide all the scrolls and written by them. Today we found them out as a dead scree scrolls. Between 1947 and 1956, uh, we discovered the Dead Sea Scroll, or we call the Qumran sources. Essenes movement, a branch or a sect of uh, ancient Judaism, strive for holiness through a uh, demanding ascetical lifestyle. The document uh, discovered include Pentateuch, uh, religious rules, apocryphal literature, hymns, prophecies, and commentaries on the scripture. When we study and compare between the Qumranites and the lifestyle of John the Baptist, we find striking similarities between them. What we reach, uh, what we understand in the gospel about John the Baptist and the Qumranites community lifestyle fit well. John was a strong and a serious witness for Jesus. John also paid the price for it. Spiritual journey is not always an oasis experience. Sometimes we feel disconnected, unmotivated, stuck in the rut. We repeat the same mistakes over and over again, continue life with unhappy behaviors, and lead life without any motivation. Ultimately speaking, a spiritual crisis. We all need a spiritual awakening. Metaphorically uh, speaking, desert is a place of testing, dry, des de uh, uh, dusty, uh, desolate place of transformation. Desert uh, cannot, uh, uh, it also uh, help us to uh, reset our goals, our vision, and uh, throw away our false notions. Encountering with the truth is disruptive. Solitude is the best way to encounter the truth of our own self and encounter God. Growth in holiness and spirituality is a journey in, uh, in community, side by side with others. Desert offers a place for inner reflection, purification and contemplation to encounter our relationship with God and self. The desert also demands life-challenging uh, decisions and choices. It is not a permanent place, but a journey on and out. We all go through desert of loneliness, meaninglessness, doubt, truth, silence, fear, greed, exile, war, poverty, pain, hunger, uh, hopelessness, uh, poss uh, possessiveness, weakness, infirmity, and selfishness. Today, on the second Sunday of Advent, uh, we as a church also draw parallel with how God has invited us to participate in preparing the way for the Lord. After the birth of John the Baptist, his father Zechariah, led by the Spirit, spoke these words, You, my child, you will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give him give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Gospel according to Luke chapter 1, 76 and 77. We know uh, that John's ministry ended abruptly. The message I wanted to convey today is this. The church of Jesus Christ in the 21st century has a similar ministry or a message. A New Jerome biblical commentary says this concerning Luke's account of John the Baptist. Luke Real, uh, raises up John as a model for the Messiah, a uh, model to prepare the way for the Messiah. We too have the same message. Whenever John's story is preached as part of the good news, we are challenged to repent so that they too may be prepared for Advent, the coming of the God in glory. As uh, the people of Israel were waiting for the Messiah to come on uh, with uh, as a baby, as a baby boy, as a, a someone who come to liberate. Here we ultimately, 2,000 some years later, we as a congregation, we as a church, wait for his coming in glory to completely liberate us. We were designated before creation and have been called now to participate in this mission. We cannot fulfill this ministry inside the walls of our Sunday gathering places any more than John would fulfill his ministry without leaving his family at home and going to the Jordan River and Jordanian desert.
Our calling is part of an awesome work, and yet, like John, we often strive without the opportunity to enjoy the end result. As we prepare, proceed with this Advent season, going to, in a reverse from the second coming of Jesus towards his first coming, we are wise to consider the, the stage of Christ's ministry in which we find ourselves in. Let's participate just like Paul or the early church or John the Baptist or others have uh, mentioned, uh, followed the footstep of those uh, as uh, outstanding examples as we participate with Jesus and prepare our hearts and the heart of our community, our family and our church and our world for coming of Christ in glory. May Holy Spirit lead us in your path of your preparation. May God bless you. Please pray with me. God, our Heavenly Father, just like John prepared the way for your coming, help us as a channel of blessing, as messengers of the good news, to prepare the way for your coming, O oh God. Help us and bless us. Give you the glory and honor. Give you thanks and praises. In Jesus' precious name, we offer this prayer. Amen. May God bless you with his words.